responsibility to anyone. In terms of stipulating issues of constitutionality, locals, mandate, I think we all need to be clear about that. As to my core work, as to the stability of the nation, all of these are part of what I work with in the day. Um, since 2017, um, co-chairs, um, we have been, Ministry of Finance, uh, responsible for Eurobond issues to further strengthen the reserves that the bank has. We have invested in areas such as PFFJ, planting for food, so that we can export more or reduce our imports. So anything that goes to strengthen the currency, the macro stability of the country, I would take um, partial responsibility for. Can we respectfully understand paragraph 51 where what you stated appears to be at variant with what you are telling us now you seem to be saying that the city is depreciating because of the strengthening of the of the dollar um, just for consistency um, where, where, where do you, where do you stand? Uh, I just want our records to reflect where exactly you are uh, in terms of responsibility on the collapse of the Ghanaian city. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, mean, I think the the censure is uh, essentially stating as a matter of fact that the result that we are experiencing with the depreciation of the CD is really the outcome of recklessness. I've not been able to figure out the recklessness that is being spoken of. And I know that there are various um, variables that are impacting the CD, or for that matter, various currencies around the world. I, I think we, we shouldn't take it lightly when, uh, in 20 years for the first time, the euro is less than the dollar, when in 20 years the yen has fallen where in 20 years the UK currency is close to the dollar or 40 years. Um, and I'm not sure, therefore, the complexity of issues that are impacting on what happens. Am I the Minister for Finance? That's very true. Um, typically, every first quarter, uh, my ministry will be able to raise two, three billion dollars to be able to ensure that our BOP, you know, is in functional mode. I have stressed that part of the reasons for our inability to be able to go to the European market was because of the delay in Parliament to be able to get our revenue numbers through. I think that responsibility also has to be taken. So yes, that did not then bring in the requisite resources that we needed, leading to certain pressures that we had not examined. Uh, but even through that, we were able to, as you know, uh, bring in the proceeds from Afri Exim Bank. Um, so I don't know that your the sense of question um, has any factual basis, and maybe I will need explanation or the correlation of that from you.
you have supervised Ghana's worst fiscal deficit in history. About 17% fiscal deficit in 2020. Do you take full responsibility for that? Um, full responsibility for what? For the fiscal deficit of 2020, which is probably the largest in the Fourth Republic. Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, Co-chairs, um, I think the question is rather simplistic. And I say so because we are all pretty learned people. We have the most cataclysmic event, almost apocalyptic, with regards to where the world is today. So for us to then make a simple statement that in this era, you are responsible for something that is so globally evident, I just really am at odds with where we are leading. Is it to seek the truth or is to just hang a finance minister at this time? I can assure you that this is a mission based on truth and facts. Um, I would very much like to know the facts of where the world is at this time. So, so let me share some facts. Let me share some data. Yes. No, Minister, um, when your answer is given, is given, um, then we, we move on. We, we can get this banter going yes, on in between. So your answer is given. You're giving the background to it, uh, cataclysmic, apocalyptic, and all of that. That's fine. Sami, next question. Yes, yeah, so the Minister's reference to all the apocalyptic, cataclysmic, um, um, they are facts circumstances they, they are, are facts and they are global developments, which did not affect only Ghana. And I agree with him that we are all learned people, so we will um, speak to the facts. I have here comparative analysis from the World Bank website of 2020 deficit, comparing with countries within our economic category, if, 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 if you like. Cote d'Ivoire did a a budget deficit of 5.5%. Togo did 4.7%. Burkina Faso, 5.4%. Benin, 3.0%. DR Congo, 1.3%. Tanzania, 1.8%. Ethiopia, 3.0%. Guinea, 3.1%. Sao Tome and Principe, 5.0%. We are the only country in this region doing about 15% of budget deficit. So how does the Honorable Finance Minister explain this? Were they not caught up in the global cataclysmic and apocalyptic uh, exogenous factors he refers to? Thank you very much indeed, and I'm glad that we are getting some new words into this narrative that we are discussing. You know, um, uh, there was, I used cataclysmic in parliament recently. <laughs> I thought I heard a majority leader also use apocalyptic very recently, so they are not entirely new to us. <laughs> Maybe the ecosystem, uh, did we add ecosystem? The eco <laughs> ecosystem might be the newest one. <laughs> I will use it. So that's the minister's addition to the final play of linguistic arsenal around here. Yes, okay, let's go on. Thank you very much, and, and thank you, Honorable Member of Parliament. Um, I think really 
Uh, the question one would eventually ask is whether in any of these countries, even in these circumstances, you would like to live there. And that will be clear. But more importantly, the structure of the economies are very different. You know, most of these countries that you have talked about do not even control their monetary policy. Okay, they never have much of inflation. They don't control how their reserves are managed. It's a very different system. You know, um, so I don't know. It, it's, it's hard for me to see where that angle is. And there's no question that even at every point in time in our growth these six years, you'd always find these Francophone countries with supposedly um, stronger deficits, etc., etc. But I'll bet none of us would like to live in those countries. Prosperity, safety, security, what, what really is the texture of this country that we so treasure? And what does it cost to be emancipated both on the democratic principles and also managing our economy? So I thank him for, for the question, uh, but I think we should never delude ourselves that those figures exemplary, uh, would, would signify a sense of an index of happiness and prosperity and democracy and security. I recall that ahead of the 2016 campaign, Cote d'Ivoire was a very dominant comparison, but it's interesting that today we are not to um, look in that direction. Now, I want to refer to the World Bank country director, Mr. Pierre Laporte, who said on the 7th of March this year that their honest analysis of the Ghanaian economic situation is that there was a certain deterioration even before COVID, and that, as he put it, we should be honest with the data and admit that we were tumbling, to use his words, we were on the tumble before COVID struck. How do you react to that? Um, I think that, that may be his opinion. I haven't really read it. Um, but I think, you know, uh, be what it may, the question is when you look at over six point, maybe three million people dying globally, about 250,000, 253,000 people dying in Africa because of COVID. And Ghana, unfortunately, having uh, 1,449 or so. You know, those are real issues. I don't know of my colleague finance ministers uh, who were able to respond to COVID the way we did with regard to electricity, water, with regard to paying people even when they were home for months, with regard to not laying off people during that period, and even going as far, coaches, as distributing food with the support of our faith-based organizations. There's a certain texture to this country that brings people here, get people attracted to it. And yes, we'll slip here and there, but no, we do what we have to do because we so strongly believe in the issue of human capital and how to ensure their social mobility. So I don't know what matrices he was looking at, but if I look at matrices such as um, tripling of um, the number of people um, we give food to, our LEAP programs, you know, people in senior high school, etc. I mean, those are fundamental areas of investment that this government or that the people of Ghana really treasure. Um, so would there be certain weaknesses because of expenditure? Yes, there would be. 
because sometimes capital investment in social services do not give you the return within a certain period. I don't think we've done anything wrong. There's always more efficiencies that we can have. And so I, I, I disagree with the statement, if it is indeed Mr. Pierre Laporte um, who said it. Um, I think it could be more comprehensive than that. In addition to Pierre Laporte's analysis of the Ghanaian situation, data from our rating agencies, the rating agencies who assess Ghana, the sovereign credit ratings report from 2017 to now. If you look at the analysis, copy of which I have here, from Fitch, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, they appear to align with Pierre Laporte's analysis. You see that the downgrades had begun even before 2020. So do you have reservations about this as well? Um, Coaches, Honorable, you know, we have um, certain areas of disagreement, you might say. Um, but I think what is clear um, uh, in the, the world, if you look at what happened to African countries during this period, the speed with which most countries were downgraded it was quite startling. It was statistically uh, impossible, but it did occur. You know, the, the, there's clear indication as to the bias on African countries and the quickness of which triggers are pulled uh, when something begins to happen. That instead of them acting to be maybe counter-cyclical, they actually react in a way in which um, you move faster down the slippery slope of trajectory. So um, as um, Chair of African Finance uh, Ministers, we actually have put in place um, um, uh, financing um, to be able to create Africa's own rating system. And it is that type of removing yourself um, from the judgment of all of these Western institutions that is going to make a difference um, to us. Um, right now, you have 29 also African countries um, at the fund. You have another four who have derailed, and another four who are negotiating, including Ghana. And this is all because of the combination of debt, climate crisis, etc., where we've literally moved about 10 percentage points more than for our countries. So it's really a solemn period um, for reflection as to when we talk about political independence. It's not a real fight for economic independence or emancipation. And it's going to take um, resoluteness and the same unity in which Nkrumah led the independence of the continent. So that's a fight ahead. Mr. Chair, another indicator which is really worrying is the debt situation under the Honorable Finance Minister. Indeed, the World Bank is projecting, the World Bank and the IMF, are both projecting that we will exceed 100% of GDP. Uh, you have moved our debt from the region of about 120 billion Ghana cities to 450 billion in quite a relatively short space of time. Many analysts have said that this has been really reckless. Do you take responsibility for Ghana's current debt overhang?
Thank you very much indeed. Honorable Coaches, I think we do have a little problem with the question that was posed by the Honorable Member. And what is that problem? It, is, it was a twofold question. One, he was asserting that there has been some recklessness with respect to the figures so yes. that he preferred. And then the second limb of the question was as to whether or not the Honorable Minister would take responsibility for that. Yes. I, I suppose that we need to establish, he has to prove or establish the fact that, yes, there has been this reckless, um, um, what, how shall I put it, um, conduct on the part of the Minister before we move on to whether or not um, he's responsible for it. That, 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 that is my difficulty, Honorable well, um So, Council, you are not saying that... Uh, the questions are irrelevant. They are germane to the grounds stated in the motion, are they not? I have not said that they are not. What okay. I'm saying is that there are two questions rolled into one. Into one? Yes. So okay, so, Honorable um, Ablaqua, are you willing to uh, separate, decouple your, your, your questions? <clears throat> Has there been reckless borrowing under your watch as finance minister? Co-chairman, no, sir. Yes, go ahead. Can we know the debt situation you met and what it is now? Um, Mr. Chairman, we met 123 um, billion Ghana CDs, and we are now at 450 um, billion Ghana CDs, about. Respectfully, how will you describe this accumulation of debt? Um, I think the question um, of defining um, the debt is, is important. How has it been used and how was it accumulated? It's key to that. And what has been the benefits thus far to the Republic? And essentially, Mr. Mr. Chairman, so when we even begin to look um, for starters at what we assumed um, on the energy-related issues, we begin to look at what we had to do um, for the banking transaction. You then begin to realize that there are these um, huge um, areas that we have had to spend money on and then given the interest component of these facilities that leads to an accumulation. Mr. Chairman, you add the foreign exchange impact on our debt and you begin to understand where the growth element is. Then you look at what we have done with these resources between defense, education, health sector, COVID, etc. And I think there has to be going to be some understanding of what it is this has been used for. The question then becomes the intervention when the intervention occurred uh, with regard to the pandemic and how that then escalated the impact of the debt with regards to inflation and therefore interest paid going forward. So yes, we have accumulated considerable amount of debt. We, can, we are very clear on how that um, was used um, and therefore do we have at this juncture the way in which global crises are, have to pull back? Yes, we do. And that is what we are looking to do to bring this down to a 55% landing point within the next five years or so. So there has been a debt buildup, that's for sure. Uh, what were the uses of it? I think if we see the number of um, uh, 
interchanges we have, the interventions um, that we have done with regards to social services, um, the real sector interventions um, such as um, planting for foods, um, industrial buildings, 1D, 1F, um, and we'll begin to realize that these have been used in a way in which it gave us a buffer to be able to go through our COVID period much stronger than other people have. Do we need to step back and uh, determine um, how all these projects have been working and create further efficiencies? Um, yes, we do. But have we benefited uh, from this um, partly also uh, because of um, the, the level of efficiency of GRA, where we, Mr. Chairman, are now about 13, 14% of revenue to GDP, intention to move it to 18, 20%, and that will then help us with regards to how um, we manage our fiscals going forward. I hold in my hands the 2017 budget you presented to this August House on behalf of His Excellency the President on the 2nd of March 2017. Paragraph 143, inheriting a debt of 120 billion Ghana cities, you promised that there will be more macroeconomic stability and that you will ensure fiscal discipline, monetary discipline, and financial stability and lead us away from what you described as an undesirable situation. Paragraph 143 of the 2017 budget. Thank you very much, um, Co-Chairs and Honorable um, Member of Parliament. I, I guess the question um, or the, the reality is that, yes, we took over this economy in 2017 with some very strong headwinds, as we all experienced, and that led to the uh, phenomenal uh, victory that brought uh, President Akufuado into power in 2017. Um, I, I'm not sure I would be the one to educate anyone here that between 2017, 2018, and 2019, uh, we have one of the strongest economies, and we were actually um, touted as some of the one of the fastest growing areas, and there was a new lift in people's um, demeanor and a new return of what Ghana represents as a black star. I'm not sure anybody will question that. That then gave us the buffets to be able to support the interventions that we did in 2020 to be able to survive, to survive and thrive in a sense um, during COVID and after. Um, so I think the facts are clear, our growth was about an average of 7% during that period, and um, inflation was down. Um, really, some halcyon days um, were emerging in which there was confidence in the Ghanaian. I'm anxious about economy of time, so sorry, um, uh, seven more people are around, colleagues are around, ready to. So how many more? One more, the last one. Ah, oh, come on. Let's compromise. Two. No, two. I'll give you two. Huh? I'll take two away. You have two. Do the two, and then uh, we take the two. Okay, so let's Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'm really passionate about our precarious debt situation. Um, if we are not careful, our generation is leaving behind debt. We are bequeathing debt to our children and our children unborn. I don't believe that that is the kind of country we inherited. So everybody is worried about our debt overhang. 
And the Honorable Minister must be worried. I, I have been reading your book, very interesting book, Leadership, Entrepreneurship and Values. Who, whose book? Authored by the Honorable Keanu Furiata. Uh, edition, first or second edition? Or, uh, uh, this was uh, celebrating 20 years of Data Bank. And very, very revealing uh, thoughts. He says at page 63, and I quote, I also feel deep in my heart that Ghana has a destiny with greatness and that our lot is not one of squalor, disempowerment, and lack of opportunity, but of peace, prosperity, and progress. But we must free ourselves from dependence. We must free ourselves from dependence and on progressive elements of our culture, government, poverty, donors, foreign investments, indeed from all dependencies, unquote. So this is what you write in your book. Um, this inspires a lot of young people out there. But you get the opportunity to be finance minister, and this is our debt situation, debt over 100% over of GDP. How do you reconcile this? Very good question. Um, and I, I think really it's a conversation we as a nation should be having. So we came in 2017 to uh, Honorable MP to meet a very dispirited nation where the whole issue of the Black Star. I, 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 Honorable Minister, you are sure this nation was dispirited when you came in? No, no. Uh, Mr. Co-Chairman. I, I, I vehemently disagree with you. Uh, if the nation was dispirited, I'm sure it's because of the negative things you said whilst in opposition. Mr. 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 Minister, you can ignore those who answered answer your question. Have you, have you stricken them out of the proceedings? Completely, yeah, out. No, thank you very much. But, but truly, uh, I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to get into this discussion uh, because it's important. I mean, I, th this week, um, Co-Chair has been, I guess in my mind, one of the darkest weeks um, since um, 2017. And that's because, um, yep, yeah, I'm on due for a censure. And then on Tuesday, uh, Professor Dubois' son was also entrapped um, with something. And you see a gentleman whose uh, father is responsible for our being here because he broke the culture of silence. And that then resulted in the fourth republic that we are all enjoying. Well, Mr. And Chairman, Mr. We Chairman, Mr. Chairman, point of order, um, is that opinion or because it's not fact? There was a referendum, all of us voted in April 1992 to have the fourth republican dispensation, to give all of these democratic credentials that we all should share in it to one person, uh, I think it's, 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 it's really uh, beginning to border on, uh, on, on an absurdity. Uh, 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 time, I, I keep saying the economy of time. It's getting to, uh, to about 5 o'clock already. So some of the comments we can ignore, some of them are move on. So stick to... Uh, right, right, this, uh, they are, uh, but the other part of it, the uh, culture of silence, I think we are aware about what happened. Some culture of silence broke in from Zedubwa, he did this and this and that. Minister, um, yes, we can, can we make some progress with that, with that? Well, we know who is responsible for what happened earlier on before something else happened, before the culture of silence, <laughs> before it was broken. It's the elephant in the room. The elephant which has got a name but can't be spoken of. Minister, can we make some progress, please? Is that mean? Thank you very much, and, and thank you. Uh, Chairman, we, we also know um, what happened on 24 February 1966. So, yeah, we can go into, we can go into our history lessons. 
Let, let, let's, we, we got to your point, five o'clock, we need to be going. Look at it, we've been sitting from whatever, let's get going, not 30, whatever they said. Minister, if you can have any, can you rephrase your answers? Do you have any answers? I mean, your last question, I imagine, yeah. No, I, I, was answering I, I think the Honorable MP was talking, in a sense, um, that um, you spoke about peace, prosperity, and progress, and um, dependence, and therefore getting independent, and this is where we are. You know, the, the, the issue of um, building a prosperous society has to be linked with empowerment of people for social mobility. So education cannot be compromised. Because all of us here from the various villages we come from is really the power of education that has brought us how far we have come. Uh, and so then that was a vision of Akufuado. How do we get rebuild this confidence in our people, educate them? And it's going to cost you to be able to do that. You know, for whatever it may be in the trajectory of economic development, there will be moments like this how we pick ourselves up as a nation and have the appropriate resources then to go on is what we have to figure out. And I dare say that at this time of where we are and the type of plants that we are putting together to recapture and go back to um, what we were able to achieve 2017 to 2020 is evident to us. And that really is a reason um, for why we had to go back to the fund program to recalibrate, to find other ways of investing, reduce the debt burden over that period, and then move on as, as a people. So yes, I still believe um, in the issue of breaking from this dependency. I think it was very clear from the President's statement as to the issue of an export-driven replacement of imports that we can have, and therefore, and putting together resources for that. We had, Mr. Chairman, great difficulty as we tried to um, convince people of the need of the development bank because we need a long-term capital and we need a term um, um, capital that was also relatively inexpensive. We fought hard to get it and today amongst the banking infrastructure is now the $750 million um, institution, which is then going to help us um, to push the issue of the real sector and industrialization. Um, so yes, Mr. MP, there will be periods of downturn, but I think we've put structures in place to recapture and to move forward. Well, Mr. Chairman, my last but one question. No, I mean, you no, gave me question. three. No, no you gave me I gave three. you three. You've done yes. two already. No, I've done one. Uh, help me out. No, I, you, no, I did one. Were you counting? Yeah, I did one. There was, a, there was just a back and forth. I did one. You do, you do, you so, should have, you should have the, 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 they are, they are, they are, they are pretty straightforward questions. Pretty straightforward it's questions. Leveled one. No, level two. So it's the last one. No, two. No, two. All right, get on with this. I mean, two. very short, two, two. questions. Yes, very short. I'll keep it short. Honorable Minister, you just talked about the fund program. You were very vehement that you don't believe in the IMF. We are not going to the IMF. Why should you be leading the negotiations? Many people have said that once you don't believe in it, you should not be leading it as a matter of principle. I, I really wouldn't um, know how to, um, to answer you on, on that one. Um, the question um, really for us uh, at this juncture is whether one has the competence to be able to do that, and whether one has the relationships, the partnerships, and understanding of our economy to be able to move forward with that. And these are uh, critical and very fragile moments um, in the history uh, of the country. I think the issue of not going back to the fund, given what you just read from my book, um, should really be symptomatic of who I am. Now, we came believing in President Akovar's vision of a Ghana beyond aid, and then fought very hard until this incidence of the pandemic that came. 
did I still believe in the Ghanaian capacity to be able to haul ourselves out of it? Yes, I did, and therefore felt that we could find our way through. Unfortunately, um, co-chairs, um, we had a lacuna in Parliament, which then unraveled and led to a certain slide. Maybe it might have gotten there, but certainly it's accelerated beyond conditions. And um, I think one of the great writers in um, Norway, Ibsen, the strongest man that stands alone. So at that point in time, with 30 million people, our revenue measures had not been passed, we were being downgraded, ability to go to the capital markets um, was in jeopardy. You had to find resources to come. It's not about my person. Be able to reverse. Now the issue of whether someone who used to be chairman of the Development Committee of the World Bank has the capacity and relationships to then go forward once one believed in something, I believe that we do. Am I committed to it? Yes. That's why we are here. Is there anywhere to go to? No, there's nowhere to go to. This is our country, and um, we just need to fight for it. But I can assure you that currently where we are going and the, the pronouncements by the managing director of the IMF, I think it leaves nobody in doubt that there's trust in the leadership of the Ministry of Finance, and she's not shy to say it on the global scale. Well, Mr. Chairman, my final question will be from the verbatim report, uh, page 27. The Honorable Haruna Idrisu providing evidence. He tended in an Auditor General's report which, that is a copy of which I have here, the Auditor General's report on general government for the year ended 31st December 2021. A discrepancy of our oil revenues of 1.3 billion cities. Uh, the auditors say your ministry is insisting that you only received ABFA of 2 billion 61 million 122,607. But the controller and accountant general is also insisting that you rather receive 3,368,095,788. So the auditor general says this is a 1.3 billion discrepancy. And he writes, and I quote, in view of the above, we could not vouch for the accuracy and completeness of the revenue figures stated in the financial statement. This is at page 11 of the Auditor General's report. How do you respond to that? It is an evidence. The Honorable Haruna Idrisu presented it at page 27. Yeah. I mean, thank you very much, um, Co-Chairs, um, Honorable MP. Um, I think, you know, with I don't Honorable MP, maybe it's 12 years um, in the House, uh, you, you have seen the reversals that occur from year to year as reconciliations and identifications are done. And, and truly, um, I don't expect um, anything different uh, than for us to be sitting here next year having fully reconciled it. And therefore, the responses, how quickly um, our officials respond to Accountant General, uh, there have been some phenomenal reversals that we thought money had been stolen, but maybe it hasn't been booked, etc. Um, so we'll, we'll, I'm sure our ministry is pursuing it to reconcile. Yeah, thank you very much, you, Honorable Minister. Um, does any member have a question? Yes. Okay. Honorable Kwame you don't have any question. Mr. Chairman, not now. When, when, I, when I have some questions, I'll draw your attention. Very well. Honorable, Honorable Bernard, no, no, I hear from No, we won't come back to you. Let's be fair. Oh, we, no, no. I, I up guess up. so. If you have questions, uh, let's, let's, let's go. May, may, yeah. may, Mr. Question. Chairman, I thought the procedure was that if uh, 
my colleague on this side, please. Uh, 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 we have uh, one here, one here. Shift to the other. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to ask questions? That's what. Uh, you, do you want to ask questions? Uh, I'm not sure now. Yes. So I was looking for a member of your side to to uh, to take the floor, but Honourable Bernard are here for you. Can yes, okay. Yeah. Chairman, thank you very much for the opportunity to to ask the Minister of Finance some few questions. I refer to the Minister's response. In paragraph 50 at page 20, and to ask what was the exchange rate in terms of city to a dollar in 2017, and what is the exchange rate now in the year 2022? No, it's it's a, just a matter of uh, fact. I'm sure the minister knows what the exchange rate was. No, it's uh, yes. Were you referring to paragraph Mr. 50 of the minister's statement? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I think it was about 4.2, and and today. Um, The Bank of Ghana, it's so difficult to find CDs, I'm not sure what the rate is, to find dollars. Um, yeah, but I think it may be about 14 CDs now. But we can, we can verify what the Bank of Ghana rate is. Honorable Minister. Would you agree? that by this exchange rate, the city has crashed. And it has become the worst performing currency in the whole world, as alleged by the proponent of the motion. Yeah. Um, there has been a precipitous fall, no question about it. Um, and that is why we are working with the fund um, to bring back um, confidence and to stabilize it. Um, but, you know, the, the issue of where the city is in terms of um, what has happened globally, um, what we have done to it ourselves through speculation, mm -hmm. and also our inability to come into the first quarter of the Eurobond and proceeds that we usually do, you know, all have, in a sense, conspired uh, to bring what you may call the perfect storm. The question then is, given the strong fundamentals I believe we have, because if you look at growth in the first and second quarters, uh, clearly over 3% in each of those quarters. And that's a certain resilience. The question is, how do we build back on those? And that's what we have to do. Thank you, Mr. But thank you, Honorable Minister, for your answer. And I again refer to paragraph 59 at page 23 of your response to the committee and to ask you, in 2016, what was the rate of inflation? And in 2022, what is the rate of inflation? Thank you. Wait, wait a minute, Minister. Let's, uh, let's, let's check this. In. Page 23. Okay, paragraph 1. Okay, so, okay. 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 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Coaches. Um, um, very insightful um, question. Um, at the same time, uh, I remember us reading a book in graduate school which said, how do you, this was our statistics class, which said, how do you lie with statistics? And so here, in 2016, it was 15.4. In 2017, 11.8. In 2018, 9.4. 2019, 7.9. 2020, 10.4. COVID. 2021, 12.6. And currently, 40.4, I believe. So it will be very easy, uh, honorable member, to say, well, I was 15.4 and you are now 40. Judgment close. But judgment doesn't close there. In, 15, in 2016, I don't know that you had COVID. I don't know that anybody ever dreamt that the euro would be less than the dollar. I don't know that the UK pound was less than the dollar. So how do we lie with statistics? Thank you, Honorable Minister. In your answer to a question posed by Honorable Okujato Ablakwa, you said you have inherited Ghana's debt of 123 billion, but he quoted from the 2017 budget statement read in March, which quoted a figure of 120 billion. Now, between the budget that you have presented and the statement made to this particular committee, which figure is correct? Is it 123 billion or is 120 billion? Um, co um, co chairs and uh, honorable MP, um, there the, the truly are uh, many ways to look at that, i.e., what exchange rate was used at that time, etc., etc. Uh, but truly, uh, you know, at the current level of about 400 billion, and so. Um, it's an important focus for, for the now. Um, the issue there, as I mentioned, could be SND rate definitions or whatever. But I can confirm with our numbers what we have put in as, as a fixed number for this. You need the budget to confirm to the committee the actual number, whether it is 120 or 123 billion? <coughs> Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Mr. MP, yes, I would like to do that. Honorable Minister, you said the total debt of Ghana, as we speak, is about four hundred and fifty billion. Is that correct? Mr. Uh, Mr. Co-Chair and um, Honorable MP, I mean, I think we have been talking about these extraordinary um, economic periods in uh, where we are. Uh, in other words, the issue of foreign exchange impact, etc something that we are talking about and therefore honorable members think is, is critical and therefore is worth essential. Um, in that same vein, um, honorable MP, um, this is what is affecting our macro statistics literally on a daily basis. And therefore we can confirm at a certain point in time or not. And um, we'll look to give you the end, 
date amount, you know, at the end of today as we check in with the Bank of Ghana. Honorable Minister, will I be right in stating to this committee that during your tenure of office, in six years, an amount of 330 billion was added to Ghana's debt stock. Um, Wait, Mr. 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 Minister, Mr. Minister, well, you, you don't need to trouble yourself. This question has been answered about four times, colleague. He said 450. We had about 120 something. Uh, and then we, we moved over from there to 450. This is straight mathematics. You subtracted the 123 from the 450 and you got in this new figure. Do we have to have that detail? As so well? you what is it? wrong if the minister said I am right in doing my calculation or you are wrong in doing your calculation? You got a few more questions. Ask your questions. Let's make some progress, please. Honorable KT Amon, with all due respect, it's possible that he's laying the foundation for you know, um, a so, so let me state yes. that. So let me state that you have added this, and then let me add the question. We are quite, Sammy, you are nodding your accent. That's the point, isn't it? Sorry. Um, the rules were set down that we will ask questions for clarity. It seems to me that what an honorable member is doing now is direct cross examination. Yes, it is cross-examination, and I don't know if it's allowed or we, other people may be allowed to do re-examination. No, remember, we will allow him to deduct the 120 from the two, uh, 450. Yes. The balance is three something. Ask your question on the basis of your balance. Let's, 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 three, 327. Let's move on from there. Uh, yeah. All right, Minister. What was Ghana's debt to GDP ratio in 2016 and in 2022? What is Ghana's debt to GDP ratio? Yeah. Th thank you very much. Um, and, and really, um, Mr. Co-Chair, you know, this is where we, 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 we get twisted up in, in these statistics. Um, so in 2016, um, we were at about 56% of that to GDP. Um, um, as we speak, it is 76% of debt to GDP. I think what we have gotten all wrong is that we are doing our debt sustainability analysis, uh, which then gets into uh, general government analysis, which means you add cocoa board, you add SOEs, you add all of those. And that then becomes, you know, this 104, 105 that one of your colleagues have talked about, because you are then going to build up um, towards a landing zone of 55%. And you need to have um, all of the debts that you can um, centralize. So that's where it is that. Uh, but uh, for example, um, co-chairs, I mean, if um, I were to say that um, in 20, 9 billion, in 2009, uh, we had a debt level of 9 billion CDs. And then in 2016, we had a debt level of 123 billion. That co-chairs is 1,300% over the eight years. So if you say that we have 122, 123 in 2016, and we have, let's say, 450 now, that's a debt level of 360%. Am I going to be brandishing a flag around saying, oh, I have only 360% and you have 1,300%? So we, we, we need to be careful. The size of the economy that has expanded, uh, but truly 
we also then have to be clear on a workout. But it, allow, it allows for that type of empathy and realization of where the Republic has to go for us to move in the same direction. Do you have, do you have any more questions? Thank, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you, Honorable Coaches. Honorable Coaches, one issue raised by the proponent of the motion is that Ghana's debt is unsustainable. What do you say to it? Um, I think really, I mean, that's an obvious reason why we are going to the fund to recalibrate. And essentially, the fund program um, is, is what you call, you know, this, this tripod that we have to deal with. You know, what do you do on your macro level of reforms and restructuring that you have to? How do you then look um, at your debt profile and therefore what operations you have to do? And then you have the financing gap um, that you have to deal with. So the issue then becomes once you um, understand your macro fiscals, what revenue you need, what expenditures to cut down, what reforms have to come in place, and then you look at your debt operations. Debt operations for Ghana, uh, we have our domestic debt, we do have our bilaterals, and then we have our bond investors. You know, this is the reason for all this talk about haircuts, where well, we have agreed that because we cannot go to the international capital markets to raise funds in the next two, three years, there's no way we can compromise the robustness of the domestic financial infrastructure. And so we are looking to protect our banks, our individuals, investors, and so that we have a strong ecosystem here. Then we'll talk of our bilaterals to see whether we get into the common framework or not, and how to negotiate um, to make sure that we bring that down. And then talk of our investors, um, where you then determine what type of debt operation to do. So that then moves us into what you call a London zone of about 55% debt to GDP ratio, which is where we want to go in five years. And at that same time, also be able to have um, a debt service ratio to revenue of about um, 18%. So you have um, uh, those um, um, border points and then you do your restructuring to meet that. There will be a financing gap and this is where what is it that you are able to negotiate with the fund, what do you do with the World Bank, what other potential facilities that you can get access to um, so that we get there. So there's no question about where we are of our debt profile and what we have to do to it and how we should all get together to make sure that we get through this difficult time. Thank you, Minister Gauthier. It's been the case that Ghana is not the only country affected by COVID-19 pandemic. And the world economic adverse effects. However, Ghana's inflation is about 40.4. The exchange rate is almost 15 cities. Ghana's debt is now about 450 billion. And all these are attributed to your recklessness, incompetence, and mismanagement of the economy. What will you say to this? Um, absolutely not. And, and, and truly, I mean, I, 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 um, it's um, really de demurring um, to hear um, these um, descriptions. when we also know that we are striving hard to keep the lights on, we are striving hard for people to eat, we are striving hard for schools to be open, we are striving hard to keep our health systems operational, 
and we also know what is happening around us in this region. Will these things befall the nation in these very strange times? They will. How do we get back together to speak a common language to hold us back? Is where we are. And I think we are really on a slippery path when we do not recognize this and therefore have a vote of censure of this nature in something that we can objectively assess and find a way as a country to work towards in unity. So this is an important exercise that we are doing, but we also have an important exercise in our discussions of the fund. We have an important exercise in our budget that has to be brought um, to the House. We have an important exercise to halt the decline of the city. We have an important exercise to ensure that we maintain the supply of fuel at the very least. And so we, we, need, to, we need to make certain really hardcore decisions uh, about what is most critical in the short term, medium, and long term. So we do appreciate this democratic exercise that we are, but when it turns out that even with the censure, three, four, or two um, of the grounds, you know, have had to be dropped, um, it, it, it makes you cry in your inside, wondering where we are going as a nation. Thank you. Mr. Um, Chairman, the last question. The last question. Um, yes, um, Honorable Minister, it is not the case that we have dropped two of the grounds. It is the case that in the case of one, we didn't, we, we didn't want to call you to answer because sufficient evidence has been adduced before the committee. Secondly, on the question of conflict of interest, your lawyer raised a preliminary objection of constitutionality and cited cases which I you know, mentioned in the morning. And we have said that we have a ruling that will be incorporated into our report to plenary for purposes of the debate. So let not the impression be given that the committee has dropped two grants against you. We haven't. We will be set, we, they will be certain, I mean, set out in our report for plenary no, in no, accordance no, no, with the Let there yes. be clarification yeah. on this matter. I don't, I don't understand this. No, 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 no. I don't understand this. Wait, wait, Mr. Chairman, wait a minute, Mr. Chairman. No, I don't understand. No, 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 no. No, no, please, uh, colleagues, colleagues. Now there, there must be there must be sanity in this. There must be clear sanity in this. No, there is no question of there is no question of there is no question of interpretation here. We took a decision among ourselves that number one, because of the constitutional issue raised, because of the Supreme Court decision, which was on the back of the Shrug decision we didn't feel that it was appropriate for him to answer question allegation number one struck out as far as we are concerned we no let me make it no we will report well, let me make my point we will report of course we will report to the plenary that we struck it out because of a b c d this is it number two chairman mr chairman then number two there was this matter relating to the billions uh, the b millions of uh, hundred million of uh, Mr. 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 Co-Chairman. Co, co then there was this second matter relating to the 100 million offshore whatever. We, there was that allegation. We called a, a, a it was allegation. It's a ground of I, don't, I don't quite get it, you know. There's an allegation that this man is guilty of A, B, C, D, D. So bring him for motion of censure. We are here dealing with the, the motion on the basis of those allegations. And then we keep on... Uh, uh, what, what is applying the semantics and it is ground, it is that. It's an allegation that he has to answer to. That there has been a hundred million dollars which had been paid into some offshore account. We decided to follow it up with uh, some other state institutions.
call PIAC. Honorable uh, members, can, honorable members, counsel, honorable counsel, members, counsel, could you please. bear with us, please? Yes. Yeah. We called a shrag. Uh, so forgive me. We called uh, PIAC. PIAC came and then confirmed that as far as they were concerned, they weren't sure that the finance minister knew anything about uh, this money. We wanted to be double sure. We called GMPC, which was immediately at the center of it. GMPC came and made a categorical statement that this uh, deposit you're talking about has absolutely nothing to do with the finance minister. Our oil, our debt, we sold the oil, we were paid the money, we instructed the buyers of our oil to pay the money into a specific account. The question specifically was put to them, does the finance minister know anything about it? They said emphatically, no, we struck that one out. We're oh, going to make... Well, Mr. Co-Chairman, we said that, Mr. Minister, don't bother, don't deal with this because of the fact that yes. I've just indicated to you. Yes. We are going to report to the plenary, plenary that, that we is... did not allow him to answer this because of what we said. Right. What, what, so but what, what, what is the has been struck out. No, come on, Mr. What are well, all right, I accept it. He accepts that we, he's not dealing with them. We are dealing with them. We'll report the way I've indicated to the plenary. If by that we haven't struck that out, that's fine. Uh, we'll take it from there. Yes, uh, sir. Who, who else? Uh, do you have any more questions? I yes. think you are done with your questions. No, no. Huh? It's love with one, one. Yeah, let's hear your one question. Thank you very much, Coach. Yeah, that's why I like. And you say so double much. too much. Uh, yeah, that would be thank nice. You. Thank, you. Very, 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 uh, thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. They are talking about GMPC. The, the chair and the co chair, they mentioned categorically GMPC was here. And then the okay the committee they made categorical statement. Among the statement was that an amount of one hundred and sixty four million dollars was given to where, GMPC where, where by where the finance minute, ministry colleague, colleague, as where, a loan colleague, without wait parliamentary a minute, approval. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought we had some agreement among ourselves on this matter. It looks like it looks like it's no holding. All right, all right, we'll put it on the record so we we decide what to do among ourselves. So we have to vote on that. We had that. I decided it wasn't an agreement.
Respectfully, if this committee has subsequently agreed that the GMBC matter in respect of the 110 million, 110 million, the gas matter in respect of this was going to be taken up by us, then we investigate the 164 further. It just arose tangentially. Our colleagues, you see, um, we said in our meeting, we have to be debated, please. Our colleagues, the eight of us will discuss this matter and bring it to our end. We wish to submit that this is a committee of record, and we received a letter yesterday evening, and it reads, I quote, the committee wish to bring to the attention of the Honorable Minister that the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation and the Public Interest and Accountability Committee attended upon the committee and gave evidence in respect of ground three contained in the motion of censure. The committee found the evidence from the two institutions satisfactory and accordingly the Honorable Minister, and the emphasis here is mine, is not required to leave evidence in respect of the said ground. Now, we are observing that. The question being asked is in respect of the lending of money to GMPC without parliamentary approval. It is not about payment into offshore account. It's a different by kettle of fish altogether. There are two different things altogether. And, and that can qualify under fiscal recklessness. You see? Um, yes. yes. Um, Honorable Co-Chair, 
This is uh, a process prior to censure. The statutory remit of the censure process is spelled out in the, uh, the law. No, 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 the law. No. Fiscal, fiscal Responsibility Act. The Fiscal Act. Responsibility Act. Yes. That's one particular leg of it. And the other leg is the general content of the motion. And where my your, uh, the Honorable uh, MP or the Honorable Member is going is outside the remit of the motion that is before Parliament. Okay. So Unless, what, can I ask you, let me ask this question. Yes. Uh, I mean, direct your mind to Article 181 of the Constitution. 181 of the Constitution. Of the Constitution relates to loans and international transactions. Very well. Right. That includes domestic loans, right? Um, no. Yes, it, it includes domestic loans. It doesn't include domestic it does, loans. It does include domestic loans. Yes. Uh, we will take our decision. Calm down, calm down, colleagues. Calm down, colleagues. Calm down, colleagues. We will take our decision among ourselves, the age of this matter. Um, council is belaboring the point that the chairman have already made, so we won't trouble you any further. Let's, let's discuss this and then we'll move forward from there. He wants to do what? What, what does Mesa want to do on this? No, 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 no. Okay. So the, com the committee is going to take a vote on, uh, on the matter of whether or not the uh, question put to the minister should be answered. Why? He, he wants to reframe. Well, okay, if he wants to reframe without a reference to the 164, you are welcome to do that. You see. Mr. Co Chair, yes. can I come in? Yes, sure. Am I permitted to come in now? So, yeah, let's hear you. Yes, my my issue yes. is on grounds of fairness. fairness when GMPC to, fairness to whom? was fairness to the finance minister. Yeah, let's hear you. When GMPC was here, yes. in a full glare yes. of the media, yes. this categorical statement was made. If it is the decision of the House that though the constitution says that in debating a motion for censor, yeah. the minister must be heard. And this, in his defense, and this categorical statement, that is which has gone into the mind of the public, no colleague, it's the minister incorrect. must not it's be heard on this. It's not an allegation That's against fine. the minister. Listen, the minister has got, uh, he had that seven allegations. Fine. Two are gone. He's got five solid allegations to respond to. The one, six, uh, four isn't part of the allegations. It won't go into our proceedings. Um, well, it, it's, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone into the process. Have you withdrawn it? No, no, we'll strike it out. Have you, no, you have it withdrawn? All right. Yeah, so we'll take yeah. the decision. Okay. Move your motion. Move your no, motion. I, 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 think, I think we've decided that we are not going to vote. Um, so yes. it's gone. We've decided we are not going to vote. So the matter is gone. Because, yes. The matter is gone. All right. So. Yes. Yes. All right, back. Um, the matter is settled. We are not voting on it. It's, uh, it's uh, a sponge. All right. Do you have any more questions? No. Good. Thank you very much. Coach, I'm done. Th yeah, okay. Yes, yes. You've disallowed the question. <laughs> not that it be a sponge. Uh, the record must show that no, this question no, was asked no, allowed. No, well, I don't care. Whether we, yes, if it is a question allowed and a uh, question allowed and then speaker, chairman, uh, a question allowed and chairman disallowed it, fine. Question expand. Either we call you and go call. I was told that they are all from all manner. Well, they are, they are, they are trains of the same. It's gone.
That, let's be fair. You're talking about question of fairness. But this is an issue that the man specifically has been told. Don't come and debate this. And then we say that the name of fairness, you should deal with it. Last question. Who, who's got questions? One, one. Point. But let's refer to our colleague. Did you finish your question? Yes. Thank you. Yes, good. Uh, um, I, I was said you had no question, so we gave that opportunity to so, one of us. So, Mr. Chairman, I can't change my mind. <laughs> You, you can always change your mind, but at least notify the chairman that you have changed your mind. I was granted audience to... Okay, please go ahead. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity. I really wasn't going to ask a question, but I think that the point has been made where some comparisons have been tabled with respect to the performance of uh, some neighbors within our economic environment. Honorable Abla made references to Togo and Burkina Faso and La Côte d'Ivoire. Finance Minister, I want to find out from you whether you know amongst any of these countries that are listed where their parliament approved their revenue and expenditure budget gave them authorization to spend and declined to pass a revenue measure to fund their budget. Any. Within the countries that have been mentioned. Thank you. Uh, on which, of, which of the allegations are you standing upon? The so-called allegations. Which of them are you standing upon? Yes, I mean, I will. Is it one of the grounds? Fiscal recklessness. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Um, thank you very much, coaches, and, and thank you very much, Honourable. Um, I, I think really you, you put your finger on it when you begin to look at the issue of, of comparisons without understanding the framework in which these countries operate. It, it really um, is not a good way. Um, to do it, um, just to say the least. Um, so no, I, I don't know of any country where Parliament did not fulfill its obligation by year end, as it was supposed to, uh, five months in which uh, revenue measures were not passed and the expectation that the country will still run in a way in which we won't destabilize the economy. And that really has had a serious impact on where we are today. Thank you, Mr. Finance Minister. That will be all for now. Honorable Ajiman Rollins. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, my first question to the Minister is, um, he mentioned that the, the debt of this country is 100, was 123 billion CDs. Um, when he assumed his position as minister, and currently is 450 billion cities. How much of what is accumulated as a, as a difference was pre-2020? You know, I, I did mention that uh, I'll finish you the full details later, uh, but maybe if I could understand the background or where you want to go, so I may be able to help with some anecdotal responses um, to that. Thank you. Um, uh, the minister mentioned that um, most of what we're seeing is as a result of what happened post-2020. So what I'm trying to ascertain is what portion of this can we attribute to pre-2020, the debt that Ghana currently has? Mr. Chairman, as I mentioned, I don't have those specific um, debt figures with me um, right now. My, yes, thank you. My second question is regarding the rating of Ghana's economy. Um, using two specific um, agencies, Fitch and um, the S&P, in 2017, 
the, the minister did mention on one or two occasions the fact that Fitch had, uh, and s &B had rated as at a B. And then subsequently, in 2022 now, um, Fitch is rating as at a triple C and s and at a triple C plus. The minister, in his response, did mention that now the... Um, he and some of his um, contemporaries are looking at changing the criteria. Was it okay in 2017 with regards to their rating and what has changed in 2020 with regards to this, the criteria that they use to grade Ghana? Thank you very much indeed um, for, for that question. Um, I think really... Um, Honorable Co-Chairs, um, the issue of um, lack of equity um, and justice in the international economic architecture should not be new to anybody in this environment. And therefore, when issues like this occur, and the responses of these institutions are a lot more draconian than would have happened to other um, regions, areas, etc. Of course, it is something to, to work around. Are we saying that uh, the past injustices, because things were relatively good, we should allow them to continue? It's a definite no. And Africa must continue to fight to change the equilibrium of things. And that is what we are leading to. Unless we are saying that you know the, the structure of um, the global architecture is fine and therefore you know let it be and because maybe at some point um, uh, you got um, a good rapport with them uh, and therefore that then affects how the future is um, i suspect for africa we need to begin to relook at those issues Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Just to set the record straight, I'm in no way saying that any injustice against Africa is acceptable. I was only trying to establish what changed in terms of, you know, the acceptability of a rating that was a B to what it is now and what has informed the decision to now move away from accepting Bs as the criteria. But the, the response is well noted. My next question is, um, just based on the uh, deficit financing of the Bank of Ghana for government of Ghana from 2018 until now. Has there been any de de uh, sorry, deficit financing? Um, uh, Co-chair, um, um, Honorable MP, um, yes, I think we did come to um, Parliament uh, during the COVID period um, to seek maybe a 10 billion um, year asset financing, uh, which has occurred. Uh, I know the bank has subsequently uh, reported uh, about 20 or 21 billion uh, more recently um, as to um, its kind of overdraft in support of um, um, the shortfalls in our auction, etc. Um, so, yes. These are uh, economic crises, these are uh, difficult times, and um, the lights have to be kept on, um, workers have to be paid, and food has to be put on the average Ghanaian person's table, uh, and so things may have to be done uh, differently. Thank you. Honorable co-chairs, um, just as a follow-up question to the figures the finance minister just mentioned. Um, is the finance minister aware that both of these figures are in excess of the 5% that is uh, permitted with regards to deficit financing by the Bank of Ghana? Um, very much so. And I think uh, we were aware of that when in um, 2020, uh, because of the nature of the situation, um, the House voted for that. Um, I, I think the, 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 the real challenge uh, for us and the integrity of um, approach to our economy 
in these very difficult times is really to understand our resources and how we, we look at ways uh, in which in this transition period uh, we use our best efforts to make sure that we get through that period. Is that going to demand um, a different approach sometimes? Um, certain maneuverability that will be required. In 2021 and 2022, the actual deficit financing by the Bank of Ghana, uh, the percentage goes above the 5%. Is the minister aware of this and has it been brought to parliament? Um, in terms of, um, the, I think the number that we talk about, I think it's quite public. And um, whether it comes to parliament or not, um, will be an issue that the central bank um, will have to work out. Um, 2020. Uh, Honourable Minister, are you suggesting that the central bank will have to bring it to Parliament? Is that is that a suggestion? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what his suggestion is. That no, have but, to bring but it to you Parliament. you are the minister overseeing the financial sector, and I think Bank of Ghana, you know, is under your authority when it comes to. I mean, I'm not talking about. The independence of, no, the independent the, the Bank of Ghana is independent, you know, but but the, the the Bank of the yeah the governor cannot appear before Parliament, and usually they come through the, the Minister of Finance. That's the point that I'm making. I see. Yeah. I mean, certainly, I I know that the finance, the House Finance Committee. Um, do, do meet with the Bank of Ghana when they choose to. Uh, and so, so, so yeah, I'm sure that there's a way in which um, they can... So, uh, to you know, I'm told by the Honorable Majority Leader that the Governor of the Bank of Ghana actually meets the um, committee of the, of the whole and, and does not come to the Minister of Finance. So I need to make that uh, correction. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very well, yes. Very well. Yes. Thank you very much, Honorable Co-Chairs. I have a, um, another question just actually just came to my attention in the response of the Minister um, when he <coughs> mentioned that, um, and I'll quote, I feel the stress of running a business. I was just wondering whether this was in reference to any private businesses that the minister owns or whether it's in his capacity as a minister. Um, thank you very much um, for that. I mean, that's uh, Minister for Finance, the issue of how businesses uh, will be able to run, who have access to loans, how to manage interest rates, uh, and how really, as a country, we should be, in a sense, diminishing the public sector uh, for private sector to be the stronger um, in terms of job creations, etc., and um, wealth creation. So yes, in, in the work that I do, uh, I need to ensure um, the robustness and continuous strengthening of the, the business community. But I mean, I think the fact of the matter is that I also um, grew a business since I came to back um, to this country some 30 years ago. And the fact of the matter is that, yes, we started a company called Data Bank um, somewhere in 1990. And believe it or not, this was in one room in a cousin's construction company in Cantamanto. 
So imagine coming from Wall Street um, with some partners, Ghanaian partners, uh, Gajapo, Afede, and saying that we are going to start an investment banking firm and work on the stock exchange from Cantamanto. But that's where we started. And it has been 30 years hence in which we really grew the whole issue of capital markets and therefore understood from the beginning what it took to build a business in Ghana. I believe we borrowed some $25,000 at that time, took taxis, ran around Cantamanto, and gradually built up data bank to where it is today, managing over a billion dollars equivalent. So yes, we have grown through a period of 30 years in which we have built a company from scratch. So as I sit in my office, I do understand the pains of business. I do understand how to build a business from brick. I do understand how to work. Uh, Melissa, I, 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 I don't want to interrupt your, your flow, but uh, um, in Parliament uh, we do have quite um, a few um, committees. So one of them is the committee that. So the question was, if I understood, uh, what you said that uh, uh, was a headache running a business, I, I actually thought that running corporate Ghana was such a business that is giving everybody a headache. You know, I thought that really was the answer. But I assume that's what you are arriving at. So um, we thank you for that answer. Um, yes. Uh, uh, chairman commenting on the answer given by the uh, minister. Uh, yeah. Yes, doctor, you done. You done with your questions, aren't you? He's only taken. The, the co chair, I, I'm, I'm kindly inviting you to um, intervene. The attempt to rephrase. No, no, just intervene. Uh, because it's a house of records. And. Uh, you, you, you have, you have reframed and recouched and totally, you know, recreated, <laughs> cannibalized, the, and 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 she, cannibalized, she, she accepts, vandalized. She accepts, the response we all had. She accepts my rephrasing no, of no, 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 the question for her. So let's make some business. Go. No, members don't accept it. Well, members don't overrule uh, chairman. Just for the record, so, chair, I, I don't accept your answer. Right. The answer the minister but gave on this was occasion, his honest response, and I think I'm comfortable with that. Please, let's not minister, what he said. You got a sense of the committee, so get on with it. From the chair, so get on with it. <laughs> The record will reflect the answer that has been given by the minister. Mr. Co-Chair, thank you. I, I am done. And my final question. <laughs> Co-Chair, my final question. Um, is the minister aware of the uh, specifics regarding any monies owed it by other agencies and state-owned enterprises. Are there any companies, subsidiaries, statutory corporations, and all of those which owe the Ministry of Finance any money? And would the minister be willing to furnish the committee with the list? Yeah, well, let, let, let's try and see. Uh, Minister of Finance being owed by, which is government effectively, uh, other institutions of uh, state or private enterprises or whatever, oh, Ghana, the question is... Chairman, you're looking for a bit more clarity. Yeah, it will help, it will help. Yeah. Okay. For example, uh -huh. does GNPC owe the Ministry of Finance any money? Uh, we, just GMBC. You want GMBC alone? Mr. Coach, I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Mr. Coach, there's, there's, there's lots of, um, quite a number of SOEs and MMDAs that, I mean, technically owe 
um, the government, and that is through Ministry of Finance. Um, I mean, it will mean, you know, some data dumping uh, to get you that whole list. Uh, but that, that comes really um, when we talk about the debt sustainability analysis, which therefore the bank or the fund may be using 105%. It is an attempt to see how we can um, centralize all of those other institutions, such as Cocoa Board, etc., uh, into you know sort of general government accounting to be able to get there. Um, so yes, I mean those. That's I, I think it's a matter of course as to the quantities uh, and various things. We'll have to do some analysis for you. You that. Yes, um, Co-Chair. Yes, no, I just wanted to confirm that per the Minister's response, he will make this data available to the committee. All the money is owed the state. Yes. Is that you make the, the committee? It's part of the... Uh, let, let's see. Well, think about it. Let's see. No, no, please. Uh, oh, Minister, you can make, you can make uh, that data available to the committee. It's, it's simple. No, it is all, it is all simple. Your, your debt management division can make that available to us, can they? No, no, no. Wait, but wait a minute. The, uh, wait a minute. the wait, government wait, of Ghana. No, no, wait, well, government of Ghana. But yes. what is the relevance of the debts of uh, other institutions of the government of Ghana? Do well, the well it all goes to the issue of economic mismanagement, which is one of the grounds. Yeah, it's one of the grounds. It's one of the grounds, isn't it? Minister. No, no, no. We will do the analysis. Minister, the that's fine. Take okay. us. Take as long as it takes you to get that information and bring it to the committee. Yeah, no, 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 uh, superior guidance um, is uh, is on order 202 of our standing orders. Um, standing order 200 sub 2. It provides that the chairman of a committee shall maintain order in the committee, deciding all questions of order. And by, by parity of president, he can also can promote this, this unity the among the committee. Report of it. But it, increasingly, it's not over, clear. Over, it's, over rude. This <laughs> over rude. <laughs> over rude. Okay. Exactly uh, what uh, I expected. Uh, 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 <laughs> Mr. Chair and Co-Chairs, I can uh, only say that I am privileged to have been a member of this committee and uh, uh, have listened to. I was, I'm privileged to have listened to Finance Minister uh, testify before this committee. I can only thank him. I don't have any question for him. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Honorable Patrick Bowman. Yeah. No questions. Okay. Katie. Yes, short. Sure. Um, very short ones. <clears throat> they troubled you to confirm. Mr. Minister, my colleagues, uh, one, I think the, the other one here, yeah. trouble you to confirm how much it was that you inherited by way of debt overhang when you assumed the office, the finance minister of this republic in January um, 2017. How much was the figure? Uh, my understanding was that you did, you were specific. It was about 123, 120, 123. Is that it? Yes. No, no. no. Um, yeah, about well, one, 123 billion. Yeah, my question is, um, do you recall what the exchange rate of uh, uh, the city to the dollar was at the time? Yeah, about 4.2. It was what? About 4.2. So if you do the back of an envelope calculation, the 120 uh, billion cities uh, in the uh, 123 billion cities in the uh, 2017, where you inherited, uh, uh, you inherited that debt, would amount to about what in dollars? Um, technically, um, and, and that's 
the reason for mentioning how to lie with statistics when we're in graduate school. So you would say that in 2016, we had equivalent of maybe 29 or 30 billion dollars equivalent. 29 or 30 million dollars. Million, forgive me. Yeah. So Gangan Twan. And then if we assume um, our debt to be, you know, sort of 430, 450 billion today, um, that then uh, results in about 32 billion dollars. So if you want to play with statistics, you say, gee, you know, we've just done three billion dollars. What's this hubbubaloo about? And that is the problem. I see. You, you, anticip you, you anticipated the way I was going to go about it. Uh, so in the 2017, 120 billion, it was about 30 billion dollars. And then 450 billion, still about 32 billion dollars. Uh, you, you haven't done badly, have you? <laughs> you <haven't> done badly <laughs> at all. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chairman, do you have any? You have. <laughs> uh, so you, you have. I mean, I think you have technically, if we are going the same trajectory for, for 15, 15 interchanges, for school feeding, for, for free SHS. Uh, for thank, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Minister, for a list, for a list of the good, the, the good things in course that you have done with the money. Um, yes, uh, Honorable Finance Minister, I have two questions. Yeah. Then my, my second question is in relation to the issue of fiscal recklessness. Would you agree with me that non-compliance with the statutes and regulations relating to the financial sector generally um, points to fiscal recklessness? Would you? No, I'm, I'm non-compliance. I'm trying. Non-compliance of what? With, say, the, the Public Financial Management Act and its regulations as well as the Fiscal Responsibility Act? Non-compliance. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know what you are referencing, you are referencing okay. and I, I don't, I'm still trying to figure out the understanding of recklessness. Okay. So, the legal and regulatory framework for the management of the financial resources, the financial and fiscal resources of the state are there for a reason. They are there to constrain, you know, governmental action that results in losses to the state. Is that not correct? I would imagine so. Very well. And I'm saying that non-compliance is an indicator of fiscal recklessness. Non-compliance by who? Of what? Non-compliance by, let's say, a minister of finance, a uh, minister of state, that is, an indi that is indicative of fiscal recklessness. Well, I don't know because I haven't evinced it. You haven't what? I haven't seen it. I haven't evinced it. Have you read uh, the, um, auditor, the Auditor General report? Certainly I have. May I come in? Sorry. Please. Have you read the... You do, no, please. Please. I, I, I gave you the opportunity. The Auditor General's report for 2021. I have read some of it. Oh, have, you, have you seen it? Have you seen the Auditor General's report? My colleague would have to...
it's, it's a it's a public it's a public document, and it's it's been laid. Yes, once it's laid, it's be, it becomes a public document. So the fact that the, yes, it's not it's not final, but that doesn't mean that I'm I'm disbarred from asking the financial the the the, the finance minister questions on it. Uh, yeah, um, let me let me let me take it from another angle. Honourable Finance Minister, you are very well aware of the decision of the Supreme Court in Kodo and Attorney General, are you not? On Kodo and Attorney General, This is uh, indeed a legal question. I was wondering if um, the Honorable Minister will be in a position to answer such a question. Um, I have inquired because, uh, because of what it relates to. Uh, it's notorious, that case is notorious for what it relates to. So I was wondering whether we should give you a chance to answer whether it's aware it has been brought to the legal people's attention or it hasn't. We, we, we are happy to hear from him. In fact, I, I personally wrote to the Minister of Finance and yes, attached yes. a copy of the judgment uh, in Kodo and Attorney General. Okay, so then what's the point of the question? Whether, well, I, read, whether I read your letter? No, 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 no. Not, not at all. It's, the point of the question is about non-compliance, okay, non-compliance with the decision and the constitution with respect to the 5%, uh, you know, uh, total revenue uh, you know, I mean, uh, of Ghana, no, I, to, that it should be paid to the Disassembly's Common Fund. Uh, Mr. Kocha, we, we are... Honorable Finance Minister, are you, are you aware of the decision of the Supreme Court in Kodo and Attorney General? Yes, Mr. Kocha. Very well. And you are aware that in that decision, the Supreme Court, you know, I mean, held, uh, I mean, ruled in relation to the definition of total revenues of Ghana. Are you not? I am aware, sir. And under the um, Constitution, and in terms of the decision in Kodo and Attorney General, you are supposed to pay the 5% as defined into the District Assembly Common Fund. Is that correct? That's correct. 5% of the total revenues of Ghana. That's correct, sir. Not less than 5% of the total revenues of Ghana. I see you have been helped by the people on our side. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Mr. Co-Chair, there are two distinct issues. There's the awareness when the judgment came, and we being clearly, we changed, therefore, the calculation of how we, you know, um, ensure that the total revenue is, is calculated. And if you see the figures that we then commit to, um, to allocate, it is within that, bra that bracket. Now, whether because of financial constraint we are able to fulfill them is another issue. So whether you are talking about arrears or whether you are talking about compliance, that's a very different question. So I would like to know. Well, in uh, 2021, you did only 1.74%. Yes, it does not mean that we did not com comply. With that's no compliance. We were not able to meet the amount. We are running, uh, Mr. Kocher, a budget deficit. We 
gone through very difficult times that you are all aware of. And there are lots of other areas that we are making do on a daily basis to be able to make sure the country is running. So the fact that that amount of resource has not been brought to the DCA does not mean that we are not um, committed to complying with the Supreme Court ruling. Yes. Okay. Honorable Minister, I have I have in my Yes, I think my colleague is finished with that. But Minister, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Sammy, uh, panic, panic. On that point, okay. uh, no, then you finish with your. I'm not done. I'm referring him to the. The Pudo thing again. Yes, it's here. Yes. How much he paid. Okay, we'll come back to that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, Honorable Minister, I have here the PIAC newsletter um, of issue number two, July to December 2022. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm entitled to refer to published documents in making, in making, in laying the basis for my, my question. Before, Mr. Co-Chairman, before you put a question, this is in relation to which charge, which count, which allegation, is it? Yes, this is non-compliance, non-compliance with this the is financial and fiscal laws of the country. Non-compliance, yes. which, can we go back to the, 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 the charge sheet, uh, you are redefining? No. Well, we do have a charge sheet, actually. <laughs> so it says that for the first time since Ghana started receiving petroleum revenue in 2011, the DCAF received, that is the District Assembly Common Fund, received an amount of 32 million uh, 380,403.91 following the 2019 decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Kodo versus Attorney General. However, the disbursement was, I mean, uh, made was 1.74% of the ABFA instead of the 5% specified in the Supreme Court judgment. Is that correct? You know, I, I, I don't know that I'm with the co-chair that I'm getting through to the answer. We, I have categorically said that we know of that. And therefore, if you look at the budget, the treatment will show you the equivalent of 5%. And that's a fact. The question is whether we have the resources to be able to comply. Well, the, 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 the resource envelope does not matter. What, matter. what matter is the percentage, whether you are complying with the percentage. So that if, 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 you, you, you have, you, if you have a small I mean a resource envelope, you should still be able to do not less than 5% of that for purposes of, you know, complying with Koda and Attorney General. That is, that is the, the point that I'm driving at. Anyway, um, Co-Chair, I think I'm done. Yes. Um, Minister, uh, thank you very much. My colleague says uh, it's okay, it's okay. But uh, let, let's put it on record. Um, you've been a finance minister for about six years now. Um, this constitution or the constitutional provision has been in place since what, uh, 1993, January 93. Uh, do some recollection for us. You can or you can't, but do your best. As far as you recall, do you know one single finance minister who has been able to comply to the spirit, to the letter uh, of this particular No, this, this question, you always question, over -room this you question, over -room this question is over This question is over the question is allowed. The question is allowed. No, no, no. If the speaker wanted you, I'll let you make your comment, but let me let me do my thing. But let me finish my. Let me finish my. No, 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 no. Listen. Can we have some sanity? Can we have some? Can you calm down? Calm down. Calm down. Nobody would push me on, from on, the on person. When you were on go, the floor go, on your go, questions, go, 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 I did not, go, I did not interrupt go, you. Go, Chairman. Yeah, you, 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 you have know. actually interrupted me. You said you finished with thank you and then I moved on. How did I interrupt you? 
You are now interrupting me. You have finished. Who had finished? You had finished. You had finished. You had finished. <laughs> All right. So my question is this: that as far as you know, is there one single finance minister who has been able to comply with this um, particular provision? It is yes or no. When I'm done and he wants to make a whatever it is, yeah, I've made my point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, you always going to read a point of order on the chairman. A point of order, the chairman. <laughs> Can you answer, Mr. 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 Minister? Who is going to call you? Who is going to call you? Who is going to call you? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sammy, you repeated this. Uh, there's another there's another provision in the uh, standard order. What is the standard order? When there's an issue to which the answer has been given, the standard order says you can't repeat that person. You've drawn this thing to our attention. Order 200. You've drawn it to our attention. You've been overruled two times. You are still raising it to our attention. You'll be overruled 10,000 times. <laughs> Minister. Um, Mr. Co-Chair, no, no, I, I, I really do not know of any, uh, you know, finance minister. Difficult for finance minister to handle that. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Minister. Thank you very much. Sabi, Sabi, we know the case. We, we, we know, we know the case. Podo and Kwashika and all of them. We know the case. We know the, we know the case. It's not an incident. Who was the finance minister in 2020? There's a recent decision. It's a recent decision. But what is the, what is the point about? Yeah, we know, we know that. What is the relevance in going? No, no, I'm saying that. No, no, we do know. Finance ministers in 1990. Completely out of order. Completely out of order. Thank you very much. Decision, please. Now, oh, um, um, I make my. Uh, that's fine. That's fine, Mr. Mr. Finance Minister. Uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues, members. Thank you. Oh yeah, we'll yeah. come to that. Yes, um, we are done with our questions. Uh, my colleague and I, we are done with our questions. Uh, members are done with their questions. It's up to you if you want to. You want. No, 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 no. Let's ask if he has anything to add. If he has anything to add, then we'll decide. Yeah, so, so it's you. If you have anything to add, then, uh, yeah. If you don't, then uh, you are discharged. But if you do... You know, um, truly, truly, let me, um, let, let me thank you for, um, for, for this uh, opportunity um, for, for the defense. Um, it's, it's a pretty difficult period uh, for me and my family. Um, it's historic um, and as dark historic to be censured as finance minister. It's a little bit sad um, when also we delve into um, these grounds and um, some have had to be step down uh, because it's a very serious period in the country's uh, economic history and life and it sends very strong signals uh, which are quite destabilizing. Uh, but let me reiterate my gratitude to the Honorable Speaker and the co-chairs and the committee um, for at least democracy and rule of law and giving me the opportunity um, to be here. Um, as I said in my submission earlier today, uh, these grounds have attacked my person, my character, and my professional integrity. And I think we have shown here that those were not very sound. But I wait to hear from the plenary. It has been a really traumatic experience for me even more distressingly, the professionalism of the staff at the Ministry of Finance who work tirelessly in the management of the economy. Uh, I'm feeling very tarnished. It's also been a very difficult week for the ministry um, with um, the exit of our Minister of State um, uh, in a way of um, that um, really, that, that's not really illicit um, and, and enhance or encourage 
um, and those not in the political sphere um, to come and help us in this. And also, really, as I mentioned earlier, um, a very strong name in our political history um, that through such machinations, you know, uh, has been made um, to fall. So it's a difficult, difficult, difficult week. Um, uh, but I have provided direct responses to the grounds brought on me and my ministry, the Ministry of Finance. So honorable co-chairs, let me reiterate that I have not breached any law for disbursement in respect of the National Cathedral of Ghana. But I strongly believe that the cathedral is an important institution. And as we in finance talk about internal rate of return, when we do investments with the cathedral, it will be an eternal rate of return for this country. I have never sought to be dishonest in fiscal reporting during my tenure. Indeed, it's on record that Mentana has seen the most transparent reporting regime in fiscal, financial, and economic reporting as a country. Under my leadership at the Ministry of Finance, there have been significant improvements in the accurate reporting of public finances under the Fourth Republic. Today, we are enjoying greater accountability and transparency in the management of the public purse since 2007. Government has complied with the reporting provisions in the PFM Act 2016, Act 921, including budget implementation report, fiscal reports, public debt report, petroleum revenue management reports, ESLA report, etc. I have not been alarmingly incompetent. Instead, We've been competent in managing the economy. In doing so, we brought much relief to Ghanaians between 2017 and 2021. As a government, we have invested huge amounts of money in the people of Ghana. When we came into government, over 12 different transformational projects which we have implemented over the past six years. All annual budgets, which included the fiscal operations, were approved by Parliament, and therefore I could not have been reckless. I have not grossly mismanaged the Ghanaian economy. The current challenge is the results of a myriad of factors, most of which were inherited and also external in origin. Honorable co chairs, as I have already assured you, even if these challenging times we have been swift, bold, and responsive. We are embarking on a journey to fundamentally reposition our economy and our post-COVID-19 program for economic growth, which will be supported, supported by the IMF and other friendly sovereigns, will be our guide. We are mindful that there will be significant costs in the fiscal adjustments we intend to make in the coming years to sustain our stability, recovery, and eventual transformation. However, we have a history of being resilient as a people and will come out better and stronger than before. I therefore ask our fellow countrymen to support our push for the needed reforms which will drive the transformation that will enable Ghana to reach upper middle income within a decade. This is a country of real prospects, and the challenges notwithstanding, Ghana will rise again. I have faith in the industry of our compatriots, but more importantly, I have utmost faith in God, who has called us to serve. He is in the ship of us, and will see us through the raging storm and bring us to the promised land. Let me conclude with the voice of the second standard of a well-known hymn, A Charge to Keep I Have. To serve the present age, my calling to fulfill, oh, may I tell my powers engaged to do my master's will. I have served with honesty and service. Thank you for this opportunity. May God bless us all. May God bless our homeland, Ghana. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, as, as, as a matter of uh, convention, we don't clap in parliament. 
Yes. So thank you very much, uh, honorable, honorable Minister, uh, for attending upon the committee. As I said in the morning, the reason we called you to attend upon the committee is because in accordance with Article 82.4 of the Constitution, uh, when a vote, uh, a motion for a vote of censure um, is being passed on a minister, um, that minister is entitled to be heard in his defense. This committee has afforded you the opportunity to amply make your case together with your lawyers. Uh, we thank you for attending upon the committee. Today is the last day uh, that was given to us by Mr. Speaker, but uh, hopefully we'll apply to the Speaker for extension of time to be able to file our report next week. And the purpose of the report will be simply to continue the debate on the motion for the vote of censure. And the report um, will be laid in Parliament hopefully on Tuesday. So I thank you all, uh, Council, uh, for the assistance to the committee the technical staff of the Ministry of Finance, uh, as well as the political uh, staff, um, deputy ministers who were here to help, you know, the minister. Um, I saw, or I, I still see a number of chiefs uh, in the audience. Uh, Mrs. Soforiata has been here solidly behind the husband. Uh, we thank you for coming uh, to hear this historic um, uh, meeting of the committee on the vote of censure uh, on the Honorable Ken Oforiata. Thank all of you. God bless you and God bless our homeland, Ghana. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I have to. Okay. You want to thank the media? Well, well, the media. You can. You can uh, no, you do the media stuff. <laughs> I can understand why my co chair is not very happy with the. Because they will be scoping me. The, with the, with the <laughs> Um, yeah, so, well, you know, ladies and gentlemen of the fourth estate of the room, I want to thank you very much. But for you, the Ghanaian people would not have heard us live in college, as we say. Uh, you've been here with us uh, on a daily basis, and uh, we want to thank you very much for amplifying the voice of the committee and the voice of the Honorable Minister for Finance. Thank you, and God bless you. Okay. Well, yes. Um, I guess I should also um, I, I have a, the class committee. They are our members, so we don't need particularly to thank them. <laughs> they are part of us. Yeah. But uh, um, chief of staff, I recognise your presence. It would be remiss of me if I didn't uh, um, put on record. Yeah. Well, I. I mean, if I you did, yeah, sure. Uh, again, uh, Nananom. I've seen all of them, family. Um, we didn't intend to detain you for this length of time. But the circumstances have just been that. Uh, couldn't do otherwise. Um, the press, you are waiting for me to, 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 to and then you can, yes, okay, uh, may, I, may I swear keep quiet. Thank you. Ah, uh, Honorable Minister for Communication, you have been recognized along, forgive me, I beg, I beg your pardon. The Honorable uh, Minister for uh, Communication, uh, the Honorable Esla, uh, 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 I don't know about some car, please. Uh, Esla Ousu, there is, I don't know what, isn't it? Ekufu. Okay. I hear the National Security Minister is here. And the National Minister. National. Uh, <laughs> Shelly. I'm told that you are there. Should I should I do our thing? Oh, that should it. Okay, that's why. That's why the two of us. And then the honourable sports minister, uh, Mr. Yeah, Mustafa, Mustafa, uh, it's here. And then uh, who else have we missed out? Masa, me me moodi ne moodi chila. Who is the papa? Who is the moodi? Of course. And then finance, finance minister. You remember when you started OE Central West, I told you that don't do it because the uh, cataclysm is mine. And then the apocalyptic is Mr. Apocalyptic. He is here. So he is here. So, and then yours is the ecos uh, ecosphere, isn't it? E ecosystem. You can own your ecosystem. But uh, I guess uh, we don't just to everybody here, isn't it? Yes, um, um, the uh, majority that has drawn my attention. Um, 
only what is to happen, the reason why you were brought here, and then the constitutional provisions um, um, which underpin why we are here. I mean, it's drawn my attention to those things. Uh, we're wondering if it is our responsibility to make sure that to make sure to ensure that uh, fairness is completely done, not just to be, to be done, but to be seen to be done. He's entitled to a copy of the draft report before we present it to make sure that he is accurately and fairly recorded in terms of his uh, um, his submissions. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll decide on that one. Yeah, sure. Um, so that's about it. If uh, there's any protocol we haven't observed, um, for, for hello. Oh, you insist. The Honorable Esiama, uh, uh, the Kwame Esiama. No. Ah, that okay, I'm sorry, Kwame. <laughs> Honorable Minister for Transport. Yes, uh, we recognize you. Well, the Great General has long been recognized. He's been recognized. Um, who, who is. Oh, we have here. When would we discharge all of you? <laughs> you know, so, Finance Minister. Well, I wish you well. I don't know whether I, <laughs> I also wish you, wishes you well. But um, uh, yeah, we all, we, all, we, all, we all feel it. You know, we feel it. Such uh, motion and all of that. Uh, I can understand how you feel. But uh, we pray for you. All right. Thank you very much. You are discharged. And this has been the live coverage of the sitting of the eight-member ad hoc committee um, uh, of parliament probing essential motion against the finance minister Ken Ofori Atta. Well, the committee was set up by the speaker of.